Today is the day we can talk about AMD Ryzen 9 9900X and 9950X. We're starting with the 9900X. You should wait until the inevitable 3D parts drop before you make a buying decision. The new Ryzen 9 9900X follows the same path as the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 I've already reviewed. So it uses socket AM5 and that means it drops straight into your existing X670-X670E motherboard. The reason I'm doing separate reviews and videos for the new 12 core Ryzen 9 and the new 16 core Ryzen 9, despite the fact they have an obvious similarity, is that they have quite different TDPs. With the Ryzen 7000 parts they shared a TDP, with the new 9000 parts the 12 core has a reduced TDP. Beyond the TDP however when you look at the broad outline of the Ryzen 7000 parts and the Ryzen 9000 parts we've got the same core counts and we have approximately the same clock speeds. On paper the Ryzen 9 7900X and the Ryzen 9 9900X are very similar. When the Ryzen 9 7900X launched back in September 2022 it was 549 US dollars which was 560 pounds including VAT in the UK. The new Ryzen 9 9900X is launching at 499 dollars which translates to 430 pounds including VAT today. I'm particularly interested in the performance of the new Ryzen 9s because I myself operate a PC that runs on Ryzen 9 5950X. In other words, the 16 core Zen 3 part with DDR4 memory. And that's running on an MSI EK X570 motherboard with full custom loop cooling. And while the PC offers good performance and does a decent job, I'm always on the lookout for a decent upgrade. The thing is, I didn't move to the Ryzen 9 7950X or the Ryzen 9 7900X because I don't like the way that Zen 4 pushes the processors to 95 Celsius. You get more performance that way, but I don't like the high temperatures. And that means the behavior of the Zen 5 Ryzen 9s is certainly appealing to me on paper. So once again, it's gonna come down to performance. And that means a whole bunch of testing. Here we have the new Ryzen 9 9900X running on auto with Expo enabled and in a quick run of Cinebench R23 multi-core it draws 162 watts for the CPU and the clock speed is just under 5 gigahertz. The final score 32,411. Next we use AMD's Ryzen Master software to overclock the processor. It's a simple one click operation and now the processor pulls 224 watts and runs at a steady 5.2 gigahertz all cores. The score in Cinebench here 34,354 which is a healthy improvement. Finally we use Curve Optimizer in Ryzen Master to analyze the processor and to tune each core to perfection. This takes an hour to an hour and a half. However, you don't require any input after the initial click. Now the processor draws the original 162 watts. However, it runs at the overclocked 5.2 gigahertz, which is a win-win. And the final score is 34,499. It is quite clear that Curve Optimizer gives you the best of both worlds. Overclock performance at auto power settings. And so we move on to our test chart, starting with Cinebench 2024. As you can see, we haven't highlighted the Ryzen 9 9950X. We'll be looking at that processor in our next video, but you can pretty much take it for granted in terms of performance. It always beats its 12 core junior partner. Instead, we're seeing how the new 12 core compares to previous 16 and 12 core parts, both from Zen 4 and Zen 3. At the top of the highlighted processors, the Zen 4 7950X does well. And then we step down to Ryzen 9 9900X. We've got two figures, one for Curve Optimizer and one for Auto. We haven't bothered with overclock. The Ryzen 9 9900X does well, beating out the Ryzen 9 7900X Zen 4 part by a narrow head. 
the Zen 316 core Ryzen 9 5950X is a distance behind and the Zen 3 Ryzen 9 5900X, that falls back by a large margin. Moving on to Geekbench 6, which favors newer architectures, we have the Ryzen 9 9900X on Curve Optimizer doing well, and then the Ryzen 9 7950X for 16 cores is a distance behind that. Close on its heels, we have the Ryzen 9 9900X on Auto, and then the Ryzen 9 7900X. You can see from those figures not only does the Zen 5 part beat out the Zen 4 part by about a thousand points, it does it while using 18 watts less power. The Zen 3 Ryzen 9 5900 and 5950 are way down the chart, pretty much on identical scores. It's the 12 core above the 16 core thanks to its slightly higher clock speed. Moving on to Cinebench R23 Multicore, fourth place in the chart, it's the Zen 4 7950X, and a couple of places behind that we have the new 12 core Ryzen 9 9900X Curve Optimizer. Just over a thousand points behind that we have the Ryzen 9 9900X on Auto, and then trailing behind that we have the Zen 4 part. Again you'll notice the difference here is a few thousand points, so not only does the Zen 5 part beat out the Zen 4 part, it does it on less power. After that we have the Zen 3 16 core 5950X and below that the Zen 3 5900X. The next chart shows CPU power consumption during those Cinebench runs. The lowest highlighted figure is the Ryzen 9 5950X, which is my processor. This was exactly the reason I bought this processor in the first place, 131 watts. It's a small step up to the Zen 3 12 core part, which might sound surprising. The 12 core draws more power than the 16 core. My feeling here is that Zen 3 6 core chips were lower quality than the 8 core chips, and as a consequence, 12 cores took more power than 16 cores. Stepping up to 162 watts, we have the new Zen 5 9900X, both on Auto and Curve Optimizer, and then you have to move up to 196 watts to the Zen 4 7900X. If you compare the 196 watts to the 145 for the Zen 3 12 core, you can see it's a significant step from Zen 3 up to Zen 4, and then you fall back to the power draw required for Zen 5. The final highlighted figure, 222 watts, is for the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X. It's a grunty processor, but it requires power. For the next chart, we take the Cinebench R23 score and we divide it by the number of watts required by the CPU. At the bottom of the highlighted figures, we have the Zen 3 12 core part, followed by the Zen 4 12 core part pretty much on the same number. We then step up to the Zen 4 16 core Ryzen 9 7950X. Above that, remember this is efficiency, we have the Ryzen 9 5950X. The Zen 3 16 core part really is efficient. Above that, we have the Ryzen 9 9900X on Auto, and then above that, we have the Ryzen 9 9900X on Curve Optimizer. Way clear at the top of the chart, we have the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. That processor scores well in Cinebench, and it does it on very little power. And then we look at CPU temperatures recorded under full load using a Fantex Glacier 1360D30 cooler. The ambient temperature has varied between 24 and 28, so I've normalized it for 25 degrees. The coolest processor by a huge amount is the Ryzen 9 5950X. This is not a great surprise. The Zen 3 16 core uses very little power and it runs very cool. Then we step up into the high 60s and we have the new Zen 5 12 core 9900X. Moving up to the 70s, we have the Zen 3 12 core. The difference between the 16 core Ryzen 9 5950X and the 12 core is quite significant. And then we move all the way up to 85 degrees where we find the Ryzen 9 7900X. And you have to go to 95 degrees to find the Ryzen 9 7950X which is the Zen 4 16 core part. And we move on to Cinebench R23 single core performance. The lowest highlighted figures are the Ryzen 9 5900X and 5950X, the Zen 3 architecture running below 5 GHz. We move up to the Zen 4 parts, both the Ryzen 9 7900X and 7950X, these parts running at 5.6 and 5.66 GHz. 
And then interestingly, when we move up to the Ryzen 9 9900X on Auto and Curve Optimizer, it's actually running at that same clock speed, 5.6. However, the performance is significantly better. Blender Classroom, this is all about running the benchmark as fast as possible. And the fastest of our highlighted figures is the Zen 4 16 core part. That's followed by the Ryzen 9 9900X Curve Optimizer and then the 9900X on Auto. It's quite a distance back to the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7900X and about 30 seconds behind that we have the Ryzen 9 5950X. My current processor performs fairly well but it cannot compete with the later architectures. Lagging another 36 seconds behind that we have the 12 core Zen 3 part. In 7-zip version 24, the Zen 4 16 core does very well. It's interesting to note the Ryzen 9 9900X, we've got two scores that are basically inseparable, regardless of whether we're on Curve Optimizer or Auto. And then we move down to the Ryzen 9 7900X and the two Zen 3 parts. ADA 64 memory bandwidth. As we said in previous reviews, this is mostly to do with the memory. And as we're using the same DDR5-6000 from G-Skill, it's no surprise they're clustered tightly together. And then we have the Zen 3 parts running on DDR4, way down the chart. Time Spy, this is the overall score, so the RTX 4080 graphics are playing a big part. We have the Ryzen 9 7950X just ahead of the Ryzen 9 9900X on auto. It's curious to see the 9900X curve optimizer is further down the chart below the Ryzen 9 7900X. Sometimes benchmarks just do strange things. And then further down we have the two Zen 3 parts, 16 cores followed by 12 cores. And we move on to games. I'm well aware some of these games show very little separation from one game to the next. No doubt this is at least in part because we're using very high presets. In other words, we're stressing the graphics rather than the processor. We're attempting to reflect how you play your games. So if you have a view on the subject, please let us know in the comments below. I'm disinclined to test games on 720p just to stress the processor, but we're open to sensible suggestions. So Avatar Frontiers of Pandora of 1440p, there's very little to choose between these processors. It's also noteworthy. The first of the highlighted processors, Ryzen 9 9900X on auto, and then the curve optimized version is a few frames behind. Between those two figures, we have the Zen 4 processors and the Zen 3s are way at the bottom of the chart. Frontiers of Pandora at 1080p. The first of the highlighted processors is the Zen 4 16 core, followed by the Ryzen 9 9900X on auto. Then we have the Zen 4 12 core part. And then towards the bottom of the chart, we have the Ryzen 9 9900X on curve optimizer. And right at the bottom, we have the two Zen 3 parts. It's fair to say there's very little to choose between any of these results. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1440p does show some separation between the different processors. The Zen 4 parts do well. Then we have the Ryzen 9 9900X below those and way at the bottom the Zen 3 parts. There is no explanation for the Zen 5 Ryzen 9 being beaten by the Zen 4 Ryzen 9. But it's the same story in Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p. The two Zen 4s do well, then we have the new Ryzen 9 9900X, and way at the bottom, the two Zen 3s. Again, a fair degree of separation, but the order is inexplicable. Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p. These figures all come very close together at the top of the chart, but by a tiny margin, we have the new Zen 5 Ryzen 9. Then we have that processor on auto. Then we have the two Zen 4s. And then quite a distance behind that, we have the Zen 3s. Interesting to note the three Intels do very poorly in this test. I'm quite sure that's because Gigabyte is limiting the power to the processors and that's making a significant difference to their performance. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080. First we have the Zen 4 16 core part, followed by the Zen 4 12 core part. Then we have the new Ryzen 9 Zen 5, and further down the Zen 5 Ryzen 9 running on auto. Right at the bottom of the chart we have the Zen 3 parts. Total Warfare at 1440p. The first of our processors is the Zen 4 7950X, followed by the new Zen 5 Ryzen 9 9900X. Further down we have the Zen 4 12 core, then we have the Ryzen 9 on Curve Optimizer. That's way out of position. 
but it's not many frames out of position. It just looks strange in the chart. And behind that, we have the two Zen 3 Ryzen 9s. And we finish up with Total War Pharaoh at 1080p. The Ryzen 9 9900X on auto does very well, and it's followed by the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X. After that, we have the new Ryzen 9 9900X on Curve Optimizer, and behind that, the Zen 4 7900X. Again, right down the bottom of the chart, we have the Zen 3 parts. Those benchmark tests that were working the CPU in Cinebench and Blender and such like, they all made perfect sense, but the gaming tests, there was a fair degree of scatter and I didn't quite understand what I was seeing. I am quite confident that over the coming weeks and months AMD is going to be releasing updates that are going to bring some sense to things. That, or well, they need to give us a decent explanation. And we come to the pros and cons as we conclude this review. Pros, the good points. The Ryzen 9 9900X offers great value for money. Pricing makes perfect sense to me. Secondly, the Zen 5 Ryzen 9 is much more efficient than Zen 4. Third, the new Ryzen 9s I originally wrote are superb all-rounders, but I'm going to have to change that to decent all-rounders for both work and gaming. The gaming results are fine, work very consistent, gaming a bit up and down. You can certainly game on this processor, but the work is where it's really at with gaming on the side. Cons. We need to see x870 motherboards to figure out which DDR5 we should choose to run with these processors. The 6000 I have installed works perfectly well. If the new motherboards actually support DDR5 8000 with one-to-one -one memory timing, that could be quite significant. But till we see it, we just don't know. Secondly, AMD surely has plans for Ryzen 9 with 3D cache. And in some of those test results, the Zen 4s with 3D are really good. There are a number of questions. There are rumors that we're going to have 3D cache models that will allow overclocking. And secondly, I hope, but it is just a hope, that we'll see Ryzen 9 models with 3D cache on both core complexes and not just on one. That's bound to bump up the price, but I think that can make a real difference to performance. Third and final point is that software can potentially get confused by the dual chiplet design of Ryzen 9. And I think that's what we're seeing in some of those game results. Uh, we've had notification from AMD to make sure we do a clean install before we benchmark the twin core complex Ryzen 9s. Uh, the results came out absolutely fine on my test PCs, but the fact they had to warn us, that makes you wonder a little bit. Overall, I'm giving this processor an 8.5 out of 10. I was wavering between 8 and 8.5. But the thing is, I'm going to be buying one of these processors. What I don't know is whether I'm buying it with an X670E, I have various motherboards behind me, or whether I'm going to wait for the new X870Es, because this is a processor that's going to go inside my own PC to replace the 16-core Zen 3 part, which is way past its retirement date. We have a news update. I finished my review of the Ryzen 9 9900X last night, and here we are four hours before the embargo lifts. It's 9.52 in the morning of Wednesday, and I have a cheery email from AMD's PR, and it reads thus. Morning, Leo. There's been an update to the 9900 pricing bracket because it was a bit too low compared to, th to the USD pricing close bracket. Only the 9900 price has changed and I can confirm the prices include VAT. So the Ryzen 9 9900X is now £459.99 including VAT. Thanks AMD. It doesn't particularly change the sense of my review but I have now decided. I was going for 8.5 out of 10. I've decided it's now 8 out of 10. Still worth buying, and I'm still likely going to buy one myself. But blimey.